He dropped out of school, huh? Hey, your mother asked you a question. Answer her. I've already told you like a thousand times, so. What, be a bum? Is that what you want to do? Do you want to be a beggar? Do you want to be a peasant in life? Mom, hey, it's not. show some respect. When your mother's talking, you're not. I don't know what we are going to do with you. We've tried everything, and yet, you still fail. All right, son. I need you to get it together, all right? You come from a long line of great men. Your grandfather, his father before him, all did great things. And I'm not going to let you mess that up. Dad, all I've been trying to tell the both of you is that this company I'm trying to build doesn't require me to go to college. That's it. What company is more important than college, huh? We spent good money for a good school so you can become a lawyer. Someone respectable in life, not a dreamer. Mom, one day I'm gonna prove you wrong, okay? I'm gonna build this company from the ground up and show both of you my dreams can come true. All right, all right, all right. This company, what's it about? Give me the sales pitch. It's an agriculture company. Right, we're gonna raise livestock and farmer. yield. This boy wants to be a farmer. Where did we go wrong? I mean, where did we fail you? Dad, the world needs farmers, okay? Agriculture is a very profitable business, okay? And no one else can do what I can do. What? What? Why are you staring at me? I'm just looking at the disappointment you have become. All my friends and colleagues have successful kids. And this is what I have? This is what God gave me? This must be my punishment. Oh, you think I'm a punishment? All because I want to go do something different? Are you serious? Son, our bloodline, we're, we're not farmers, okay? We're not digging in the dirt, getting our hands dirty, tending the cows, those sort of things, okay? We're social elites. We're eating the finest cuts of meat. That's who this family is. And quite frankly, it's about time you recognize that. You know what, no. You both sound insane right now. I'm leaving. Hey, hey. Let him go. Let him go. He wants to play Farmer Brown. Let him. He'll regret it one day. Let's just put him out. I can't stand looking at him. He's 22 years old. He's a man. Let him go out in the world and fail. Just not under my roof. You're right. I agree. So it seems we're losing shares. Our clientele has went down by 30%. How about we double back? Hire some new lawyers, get a new fresh set of eyes, you know, give them something to work with. That does sound good, but Mr. Fishberg is trying to move into a, a different direction. Okay. And what is that? Well, as we all see and know, there's a lot of law firms popping up all over the city. Now, the law business is pretty lucrative, but the competitions are getting high. So, Mr. Fishberg made a business proposal, and he wants to act in it. And what was the proposal? Livestock. Livestock is the proposal? Yes, and isn't that incredible? Um, it doesn't sound appealing, but I'm sure you'll make it appealing, right? So, do tell. I will. <clears throat> okay, live. You see this chart right here? This explains how high livestock is. Do you see the big difference? Now, livestock is very huge, but it's a hidden gem. Not a lot of people know about it. Now, we don't have a lot of farmers. That makes the demand for food more expensive. Now, think about this. Every time we hire a new lawyer, it costs us two to $300,000. Where in Fort, with livestock, the cost of supplies are very low, and the interest is very high. By me saying this, livestock is now a billion dollar industry, and we've recently made an investment in a young farmer who has great potentials. So when do we get to meet him? Does the board have a vote on this? Well, I'm sorry. As you know, Mr. Fishberg is the owner of the company and has the most shares. So that means by default, whatever he says is final. So back to my question. When do we finally get to meet this man? It's gonna make us $10 billion. He's actually here in the lobby. I just wanted to break the ice. I'll go get him. My guy.
All right, guys, uh, meet Elijah. <laughs> Elijah. Uh, take it, uh, you guys know each other? Yeah. That's my son. Elijah, what are you doing here? Wait, this is the loser's son you told me about? This is, this is him? Wait, this, this is him? So, you're the one the company's investing in. Yes, I am, Joseph. Elijah, why don't you explain to all of us how this works? Gladly. For the last five years, I've dominated the livestock industry. I have crops, animals, and partnered with several local businesses in my community. A year into my success, we branched out and grew our clientele. As the demand for crops, meat, and other agricultural necessities grew, my company expanded to meet those demands. We only started with $5,000, and I had a friend who had a lot of land that his father gifted him. With that land, we then started a farm. We started with pigs, and as they grew and grew, we eventually sold them to a major company. And to this day, my company has made $1 billion. Thanks to you all, we've only grown further. Brad saw the opportunity for growth, brought it to his boss, and they approved ASAP. They decided to invest $10 billion into my company so we can expand internationally and domestically on a large scale. $10 billion? That's what we invested $10 billion? Yes. And you should see the returns we're already receiving. How long has this investment been going on? We actually invested a year ago. Mr. Fishberg wanted to keep it under the table until we were sure of what we were doing. The board didn't deserve to have this information? Well, as you know, Mr. Fishberg is the owner of the company and has the most shares. Therefore, whatever he says goes. I take it this meeting is adjourned. Elijah, that was great. Look forward to working with you. Thanks for having me, Brad, and thanks for believing in me. Gotcha. <clears throat> so you did it, son. Yeah. Your failures made it. Well, what can I say? You proved yourself. I'm proud of you. Save it. I don't need you to be proud of me. What? Did, did I do something wrong? You made it successfully. I'm proud of you. When I needed you to be proud of me, you weren't. Now that I've made it by myself after you kicked me out, I don't need it. Son, don't, don't talk to your mother like that. Son. <laughs> and who are you calling son? For the last five years, I haven't seen or heard a word from you, either of you. I could have been dead for all you know. Don't you dare call me son. I'm just glad you guys were alive to see me make it. And I don't plan on failing. More stairs, go figure. <laughs> not, not only did I make it, but the company you both worship so much invested $10 billion into a dream you called me a peasant for. You said it was too beneath you high societal people. Well, hi, high societal people. Let's see how high they think of you now. <clears throat> the moral of the story is, your kid's life don't belong to you. They don't need to follow your every move. And they owe you nothing but love and honor. Forcing your kids to follow in your footsteps is wrong in a form of peer pressure. It's your life. Do with it as you please. And let your kids choose their choices as well. The visions and abilities that God gives to someone, you may not be able to see them, but it doesn't mean they don't exist.